let's talk about building your first business empire. Right now, there's a lot of people who are, who've entered into the Airbnb space. And a lot of these people are facing the prospect of not being able to rent their house out on Airbnb because here's the problem with Airbnb. There are too many people who have an Airbnb. And this is a similar problem that's happening on Turo. There are too many people who've gotten into Turo business. And there's a similar problem that's happening with Amazon FBA. Once again, what do all these businesses have in common? It's not what you think it is. They do not know how to get customers. And this is one of the things that helped me when I got started in business. My first training was at a company by the name of Renacrate, which taught me how to, and Renacrate actually provided the leads and I started to facilitate and I started to hunt for more leads. So in my business development, I learned how to find leads. I learned how to set certain things up. I begin to understand and I begin to know this, this is a critical component for any business. How do you find customers for your business? If you do not figure that out as early as possible, your business is going to struggle. As what I talked about with Airbnb, what I talked about with Turo, and what I talked about Amazon FBA, and we can add one more, we can add Etsy. These people do not know how to get customers and they are become slaves to the algorithm. And many, like once again, and you will hear about this in major news outlets, coming up. Many Airbnb homeowners are going to be selling their properties because they cannot make enough money to cover that mortgage. So this is one of the things that you have to understand about creating your business empire is how to find customers, how to get customers, how to create a situation where you can get customers because this is something that I have found to be commonplace with all my businesses. Going way, way back in time when I had the cold call to get customers for Renacrate and I had the cold call to get customers for my commercial furniture office business. And I had to do multiple things. And when I was in the storage unit business, I had eBay as a sales channel, Amazon as a sales channel, the warehouse as a sales channel, Craigslist as a sales channel. You see what I'm saying? Customers, 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 customers. Now eBay and Amazon, I wasn't getting the customers. I was just putting up items that I knew people wanted. But with Craigslist and my warehouse, I had to go out and literally scratch customers out of the dirt to make sales. And this is something that no one really on YouTube talks about. It's like, right now, this is the big fantasy. You can make all this money with ChatGPT and you can make all this money with MidJourney. And literally, I watched the videos three, four months ago. Now the videos that are coming out are very, very different. My Etsy store has crashed. We're not making sales because here's the thing. And this is one of the reasons, like I'll share something with you Partially. Right now I'm running an experiment on how to get customers. And once I work it out, because we're just in day three of the experiment. So we've got a long way to go. And I'm not gonna come on YouTube and talk about, well, this is the best way to get, no. This will be reserved for my students. I am not gonna come on YouTube. If you've noticed, if you've been following me for a while, if you're brand new, well, hello. I don't share as much as I used to. I don't share nowhere near as much content about myself as I used to, and there's a reason. Once you go ahead and develop something that works, and it works really, really well, you come to the YouTube and you put it out on the YouTube platform, this could literally crash your business. It could literally crash your business. So one of the things that you have to do is to, and this is another part of setting up your business empire is you have to get busy. Now, this is one of the things because we're going to be doing in the month of July, a lot of training on how to get customers. 
Uh, I'm about to say some stuff that's gonna shock you. When you're on the highway, do you see billboards? Yes, you do. And you see at people advertising on billboards. There's one billboard that's on Peachtree Industrial outside 285 perimeter. And there's been this lady, a real estate agent, that has been advertising on this billboard for years. Not a year, not that she's been on that billboard for years. Now, if you know anything about billboard advertising, billboard advertising can be rather expensive. So why would this woman, who looks to be pretty smart, who looks to be pretty efficient, be spending all of this money on a billboard? The answer is really simple. That billboard gets her customers. I'm about to go ahead and say something else. Billboards get you customers. Radio advertising gets you customers. TV advertising gets you customers. And I know you would like, these things are dying, but are they really dead? There's, you know, I'll share the story of one of my grandparents who got sick and it literally took him 15 years to pass on. So he started dying once he got this illness, but he did not leave us for 15 years. And this is one of the things that you will learn about marketing and advertising. There are older forms of advertising that still work quite well. There was, um, I really don't listen to public radio anymore because typically my phone is tuned in to Pandora or YouTube and that's what I listen to while I'm driving my car. But when I did used to listen to radio, there was um, this dental office that used to advertise on the radio station greatly. They were on there every day. Because here's the thing that you will understand, and this is going to be somewhat offensive to the free 99 crowd. Good marketing can make you money, but good marketing is usually expensive. And I got a question for you, and I want you to put the answer in the comments. Would you pay $100,000 for advertising that made you $300,000? So let's go ahead and explain this. You spent $100,000 and you got $3 back for every dollar you spent. So you spent 100,000, you got $300,000 back. Your ad costs were 100K and your profit, depending on what you're selling, was 200K. Would you spend 100,000 to make 300,000? Put that in the comments. I got another question. Would you spend 100,000 to make 200,000? Put that in the comments because one of the things that, you know, like I'm going to go ahead and say it, would I spend a hundred thousand to make 200,000? Yes, because that meant in a month, I spent a hundred thousand dollars a month, $1.2 million in advertising costs. And I made 2.5 grand total per year. Oh yeah, I would do that. Because here's the thing. And this, this is one of the things that people shy away from is spending money on marketing because they feel it's too expensive towards the end of the year, well, yeah, toward the end of the year, I'm gonna start spending a lot of money on marketing. But once again, this prospect of teaching you how to get customers is composed of many, many different things. First of all, let's go ahead and talk about running ads on YouTube and running ads online. If your website isn't designed to convert these new leads, you're just gonna spend a lot of money on marketing that will not convert. So what do we know here? We know that we must first have a prepared website that is designed to convert this new traffic into sale. Because if you just go ahead, and this is one of the things I, I see all the time with the guys who are doing drop shipping. I was running ads on Facebook and I spent all this money. Number one, <clears throat> running ads is a process. Number one, your website must be warmed up to receive those ads. That's number one. Number two, you've got to test your ads. I know this sounds strange because it's just run ads, just run ads, right? If you don't test your ads, and what is testing ads? You're gonna create three to five different ads and you're gonna run them all at the same time and you're gonna see which ones perform the best. And then you're gonna take that best performing ad, keep that, and then you're gonna create some more ads and you're gonna run them all at the same time. And the ads that do good, you're gonna keep those ads. Like on YouTube, I see some very smart marketers that are running 
three different sets of ads at the same time. They're testing their ads. Because if you don't test your ads, and if you just go along, you just create an ad and put it out there, you could be losing all types of money. So this is a series that I'm gonna start, you know, building your first empire, because it all starts with you getting customers. And if you can't get customers, we're gonna be talking about copywriting. Uh, copywriting is something that I do. And one of the things I have noticed is your copywriting must fit your audience. And one of the things that I have found to be very effective with one of my email lists, because I got an email list that is very much about hype. And I got another email list that's more so about information. And I compare the open rates and the, the email list that's about information, they typically respond much better than the hype group. And the hype group is the largest e email list that I have. But I have found out for the hype group that long form copy, which traditionally it has the best conversion rates, it doesn't work with this group of people. But what I have found out is very short form copy, really short, I'm talking about maybe one, two, three sentences in a link performs very well with that group of people. And this is one of the things you have to know. And this, this is another thing. Who is your audience? Who are you marketing to? Who are you creating? Who are you running ads for? Because if you do not do this, if you don't have an ideal of who your marketing is, and I, I will explain really deeply. I used to run a bunch of ads in uh, Craigslist. And I had a concept and the ideal of who I was communicating with. And these ads worked very, very well because I had a sense of who my audience was. I knew what they were looking for. I knew, I knew a lot about my audience. And this is why these ads really, really worked very, very well. So once again, who's your audience? Because this is something that, you know, I, I've seen a lot of people talk about this, niches and don't niche down. And I'm going to say something as clear as I possibly can. When you have a defined niche and a defined audience that you're selling to, and once again, when you niche down, your audience gets smaller, right? But your profits go through the roof because you're speaking to a specific group of people. I've seen many people, you shouldn't niche down. You should just come up like in terms of creating a YouTube channel, you just create a YouTube channel, put some videos out, whatever videos do the best at your niche. That may work, but from a profitability standpoint, I don't really think that's going to work that well. So one of the things that you have to do is be very well acquainted with who your audience is and what your audience is doing. Because if you don't, this is one of the reasons, like once again, I just told you, I have, I have, I have several email lists and I got one email list that I have to communicate very differently than I have to communicate with members of my other email list. Very, very different communication, very, very different um, take because I'm speaking to two different audiences. And because I know this, and like I said, I got one email list, it just doesn't make sense to send long form copy, right? And I have another email list where I can send long form copy. And this is one of the things that you need to understand, know, and acknowledge when you're communicating with your targeted customer. Because if you do not know how to get customers, right now there's somebody who has a mortgage on an Airbnb property. And right now they're sweating because they're having to pull money out of their income to pay this mortgage, or maybe part of their own money to pay this mortgage because they're not getting enough Airbnb customers. And I've seen this over and over and over again with so many entrepreneurs who get online, who do Airbnb, who do Amazon FBA, who do Etsy, and who do Toro. And once they run into a situation where they cannot get customers, this is when the freak out moment happens. This is when the, like, once again, I used to have a car rental business and I used an app called Hire Car to get customers. And once again, 
my big issue with the rental car business wasn't getting customers. Uh, I had 31 cars and this, this is where it gets really messed up. My biggest day at one day, I had 29 of my cars rented out. So I didn't have a problem with getting customers. My problem was the customers because the customers, because at, at one point I had 12 wrecked cars out of 31. See, that was the big issue with the car rental business. My issue wasn't getting customers. My issue was having customers that would take care of my property and not destroy it. That was the big issue that I had with the car rental business. You never once heard me, I had a problem getting customers. No, they were lined up. But once again, going back to your audience, do you wanna work with an audience that you appreciate and like? Because that's another thing, that, that'll be a whole nother video. But one of the things is, you're gonna to have to learn how to get customers. And this is going to be the foundation of any business that you build, whether it's online or not. All right, so I don't know when this video is going to drop, but I think it's going to drop in June. So you want to go ahead and enroll in the Corporate Citizen Playbook because July 1st, the price goes up. And also on August 1st, I am going to announce the winner of the $10,000 prize. There's a $10,000 first place prize and the second place prize is a computer designed for, I'm probably going to give that to someone in the YouTube course because it's very, very important. So if you want to reserve your chance to win $10,000, you need to go ahead and enroll in the Corporate Citizen Playbook ASAP. Because once again, this is gonna be information that you can't Google. This will be information that you cannot literally just find here online. We're gonna get into real data sets because this video is gonna be really different from virtually any video you will see on YouTube. How many videos on YouTube do you talk, see talking about how to get customers? And I'm telling you, a lot of those folks in 20, end of 2023, in the beginning of 2024, are gonna have a lot of problems. They're gonna have a lot of problems because they don't know the foundational aspect of a business 